We're gonna have Valentine's Day brunch we're together. Gonna, are I, we? I was just about mm. to say <laughs> this is kind of interesting. This is nice. Okay. I didn't and know I was signing up for this. Full that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was that the champagne? surprise. Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise was is that you were making this for us. Oh. <laughs> okay. So what do we have here? This looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So it's a uh, it's a pukio pepper and uh, ricotta cheese frittata. Um, yeah. The heart shaped cut for uh, there's a hair on it. Heart shaped cut for uh, for uh, Valentine's Day. And we have uh, custardy French toast with um, bananas foster. Well, uh, tell me how you made this first heart-shaped dish. Um, <laughs> it's really, really simple. It's all the ingredients into a bowl, Just whisk it together, bowl. and put it into well, an well oven. What is actually? What, what oh, you want to know the ingredients? Yes. Yeah, you, you got to rewind I, the I know. Tape, I'm huh? asking for a lot rewind here. I know. I know. Uh, so it's pakeo pepper, scallion, mm -hmm. um, ricotta cheese, cheddar cheese, That's salt, good. baking powder, and flour. Mm -hmm. and eggs, obviously. Whisk together. And just with a heart shape cut out at the yeah. end, mm -hmm. it looks great. It's a really nice touch. Yeah. All right, moving on to our French toast. Yeah. So the French toast is maybe a little bit more complicated, mm -hmm. but it's it's probably uh, has a little bit more effect for Valentine's Day because it's super super sweet. Um, it's a, a, a brioche bread soaked overnight in a in an egg custard with so vanilla. So this does take some thought if you're doing something. Yeah, yeah, overnight. no, but you can do it. Most of the most of the stuff could be done the day before. Okay. Yeah. And then um, roasted bananas in a mixture of um, maple syrup. Rum, um, dark brown sugar. Ooh. Yeah, and butter. Oh my goodness! Very, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. One day we, you know, one day a month you can you can kind of splurge. It should be on Valentine's <laughs> Day probably. So now for people in our chat room who are watching, who are thinking, yeah. all right, we're not going to do brunch, but I'm a total beginner and I really want to make a nice Valentine's Day dinner for my sweetheart. Yeah. What would you recommend? Again, a, a true beginner. Dinner. Dinner. For dinner. Uh, for dinner. I don't know. I mean. For me, when it comes to making dinner for someone else, I want to spend as much time with them as possible. So I don't want to spend all night in the kitchen preparing. Right. So I always think simple is better for me. So I would do like a roasted chicken, something large that you can kind of like stick in the oven and walk away from, come back 45 minutes later and it's ready. And what do you recommend for sides? I don't know. I mean, this is the season of squash and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I think I would go there. And a dessert? Hmm. I don't know. I think chocolate. It has to be chocolate on Valentine's Day, right? Strawberries and chocolate. Yeah. What else is there? Right, exactly. <laughs> Champagne, you know. So tell me about, we're going to switch gears a little bit from Valentine's sure. Day. I want to hear about this temporary restaurant that Rick just <coughs> told me about. It sounds yeah. really cool here in Manhattan. Yeah, it's in Soho. We just opened about three weeks ago. Um, we're still kind of getting our legs, but it seems to be going very well. I haven't really ever heard of a temporary restaurant. What exactly does that mean? So it means that in nine months it's going to be gone. So we basically built a restaurant as a, it's more of a, think of it more as a, a, a museum space than a really a restaurant. So it's really a temporary space where creativity can exist. One of those, those um, parts of creativity is food. Mm -hmm. um, the others are, you know, design and branding, photography, and music. So all of these things are existing inside of the space. So it's a little bit less like a restaurant that one would expect, even though you're still going to dine and eat while there. Well, it sounds like a great atmosphere, though, to be able to enjoy Yeah, yeah, meal. so fun. And, and because I have a restaurant uptown, which is a little bit, maybe a little bit more serious mm -hmm. and stuffy, um, it's kind of nice to come downtown and let loose a little bit. Now, the, the menu changes every month, is every that month. right? Yeah, so for the, for the duration, uh, every month, the, the menu, um, the musical composition, and the interior design will change, you know, iterations once, per, once per, per month. Does it all kind of have a theme and flow in some way? Yeah, yeah, it's not quite it's not quite as obvious as one might think like you know we're in France now and right. next month you know we're next month we're in Germany it's not quite like that it's a little bit more um, sort of um, implied and less described I can imagine though with all these creative people it's rather challenging to come up with a different menu yeah. and, and theme per se per month I agree but there's a lot of growth going on I mean for me especially because normally I'm the person inspiring inside of the restaurant I'm the one that's dictating constantly mm -hmm. so uh, for me to be in a collaborative with others it's pretty cool now, in terms of cost, is it can somebody expect just a price on the menu per item yeah. as any other restaurant? No, no, it's it's a prefix, so it's fifty eight dollars for food. It's straight, um, and it's three courses, so it's an appetizer, entree, and then we have a the dessert is actually on a cart, so it kind of gets wheeled around the dining room and plated in front of you. So, what's on the menu this month? So this month, um, it's it sort of exists in kind of a Scandina Scandinavian area um, in terms of the food style. So, I mean, my favorite dish on the menu is um, fried potato skins with um, a wheat beer fondue and pickled sausage. It's fantastic. Um, I want to talk about Dovetail a little sure. bit because what I think is really interesting about your restaurant mm -hmm. is you're one of the few restaurants in New York City that have a very extensive sherry menu. Yeah. Tell me the importance of that. I, you know, I fell in love with sherry. I was, I was a cook in, in Paris um, for, for over a year, and afterwards I sort of took a walk about around Europe. And I was in, in Spain, and I had no money. And sh sherry was basically the only thing I could afford to drink. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't really know that it could, you know, in America um, until 
I don't know, probably 10 or 15 years ago, it was only sweet sherry. You could only really drink something that was like, it was kind of like one glass and done. But in, in Spain, there's, there exists a dry sherry. So it's something you would, dr you would drink with like an appetizer. So it's something that I wanted to introduce into the restaurant and pair with food. And it's taken, I mean, it's taken hold pretty well. Did it take a while to catch on, though, to gain momentum? Yeah, and I think we st we still are gaining that momentum. I mean, every day people are surprised. Like, I would never think that this was possible. I think the same sort of thing kind of happened in the 90s with sake. When sake was introduced into our culture, and, and it wasn't just one kind. There's many, many kinds from different regions. You spent time working on both sides of the country. Do you miss L.A. at all? I miss the beach. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm a, I was a beach kid growing up, so I really miss the beach, but... Um, Aside from that, I think New York is my home. I always wondered, I've never been to L.A., mm -hmm. is the dining experience there different than here in New York? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in L.A., it's a lot more about the scene mm -hmm. and about who, who's, who else is dining in the same room. And, and I think it's changing uh, slowly, but it's still about what's hot. And, and I think in New York City, it's about, you know, making a statement and people will come visit you. I think there's just a lot more of a dining culture and a food culture here. So it's more about the York. food here in New York I than the scene. So. Yeah, and, and also things you know the nuanced things that you would never guess like there are professional waiters here in New York City that will work you know and 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 professional cooks they're not just you know out of work actors right. <laughs> so you have you know you're surrounded by real professionals now you started in anthropology didn't you yeah. talk about a switch from anthropology well, to <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know who you were signing up for right did you you on? had no idea <laughs> yeah, romantic right? brunch for two yeah, right, totally. <laughs> do you like long walks on the beach yeah, no. therapy's on Thursday <laughs> lady I don't know what you're doing here <laughs> so I, I'm just curious to know how yeah. you go from anthropology to a cooking passion uh I, I mean cooking is it's all about being a craftsperson and I, I grew up with a very blue collar you know family so it suits me really well. I, I'm still very interested in anthropology, and I still like to travel and explore. But mm -hmm. uh, to make a career out of anthropology is probably as difficult as making a career as a chef. Basically, you know, you have to really, really work hard. Mm -hmm. But there was something. There's something about cooking that's very rewarding and, and immediate. You know, you can make something and feed it to someone. You can see the immediate satisfaction. Anthropology is a little less so. It's a little bit more um, observation rather than interaction. This must be a really great way to get girlfriends and land dates. I mean, as a male <laughs> chef in the city, it's got to be. I mean, I'm, I'm sure women think how great that this yeah. guy can prepare this amazing meal. Yeah. Let me tell you a little story <laughs> about that. <laughs> you want to date someone who works 90 hours a week? <laughs> Are you single then? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the answer is yeah. uh, Someone just asked, we were talking about love letters earlier, yeah. so someone was asking him to get John's love letters. That's right. Do you have any of your old love letters from elementary school? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Really? I think they must have been lost in the fire. Oh, I don't know. No. Yeah. You're not the romantic who holds on to them? I don't, I don't think so. Maybe my mom does. You'll have to ask your mom. Something at stake. You'll have to ask your mom and then let us know. Yeah, right? And before you go, I'd like to ask yeah. all of our chefs, especially because oh. I'm trying to start to learn how to cook a little bit better. If I had to have five ingredients in my cabinet mm -hmm. at all times, what do you recommend that they should be? Uh, in my contract said I would have all the questions ahead of time. I'm not going <laughs> to, what, what the hell is this? You're coming back to the show, are you? Okay, here we go. Ready? Salt. Salt's okay. the first one, right? Okay. Uh, really good extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. Your kitchen cabinet or also your refrigerator? Anywhere. Oh, okay. Uh, how many was that? That was two. Was okay. But and now how do you find the best extra virgin olive oil? Because there are so many options to choose. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you get what you pay for with, with olive oil. It's just like gold and diamonds. You get what you pay for. There's, you can go to the store and you can see. I mean, I would r recommend going to some places like Zabar's or something where you can you can see sort of something kind of fine, right? Okay. Um, so we're, we're salt and olive salt oil. Salt and olive oil. I mm. like putting you on the spot. Yeah, here. right? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. I can we can we say tools also like a couple of tools? All right, I'll give you yeah. tools. Okay, I think a mandolin is one of them. Mm -hmm. A Japanese mandolin, so you can s slice things very very thinly. And I love like a fruit salad sliced very thinly. It's mm -hmm. texturally kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I would say good coffee, right? Hmm. That's five. How about a was that five? You made it to five. Okay, perfect. Did he? Salt. Salt. Oil. Oil. The mandolin. Fruit slicer? Oh, no, no, yeah, the mandolin was a fruit That's slicer. That's right, yeah, I thought we were on the Oh, okay. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah, I'm off the hook right. Yeah, right? Thank you, I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, is watching, expecting all of these great, yeah, right. great ingredients like, for the show. Yeah, I just, come on, it's like shell shock. I just came off stage, you know? It was really hard work for three and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, what's the, I, I don't know, I guess the, the fourth would have to be 
or the fifth rather would have to be like it would have to be some kind of cheese, right? How about briat savarin? A triple Ooh. cream. All right, we'll yeah. take that. Those are all great suggestions. Thank you very much for yeah. coming on the show. The torture's over. I'll let you go. Enjoy Thank your you. breakfast. <laughs> 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 Bye, John. Thank you.